today, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. And we're back here again in, in Denver. I've been at the uh, end of the Mass today. We'll have a um, betrothal ceremony. And, uh, you know, so the betrothal ceremony in preparation for the marriage of ancient blessing, given preparation for marriage, a betrothal ceremony. It's a very beautiful and ancient ceremony. And uh, the ceremony is about, about 10 minutes long, maybe. And so immediately after Mass, normally they're seeing the recessional and then uh, continue singing while putting the vestments away. It takes approximately 10 minutes. It acts as your Thanksgiving after Mass. You don't run away right after Mass. So this time of Thanksgiving will be, uh, instead of doing the recessional hymn, we'll just simply have the betrothal ceremony, the little betrothal ceremony in the preparation for the marriage. <clears throat> And so the, today is the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, and the epistle taken from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1. Brethren, I give thanks to my God always for you, for the grace of God that is given you in Christ Jesus, in Jesus Christ, that in all things you are made rich unto him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, at the testimony of Christ was con as, as as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that nothing is wanting to you in any grace, waiting for the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also will confirm you unto the end, without crime, unto the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the gospel, taking that according to Saint Matthew. Chapter 9. At that time, Jesus, entering into, the sh into a ship, passed over the water and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him one sick of the palsy, lying in the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the man sick of the palsy, Be of good heart, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. And behold, some of the scribes and within themselves said within themselves, He blasphemeth. And Jesus, seeing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say, Thy sins are forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the man sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. And he arose and went to his house. And the multitude, seeing it, feared and glorified God, who had given such power to men. That's what the words of today's holy gospel. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. A few considerations today taken primarily from St. Peter Chrysologus, Chrysologus on one historical verse of the gospel today. And he got into a boat and he went to his own city. And St. Peter says, why did he get into a boat? Because this is the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 9, and we read that when he had gone across the river, across the lake of Genezareth, the Sea of Galilee, he told his apostles, you go across in the boat, I'm going to stay on top of a mountain and pray. And so he did. But then in the middle of the night, he walked across the sea. Now, it is enough of a miracle to walk across the sea, but it just so happened that there was a storm that night, and he walked across the sea in the, sea in the storm. The St. Peter saw him from the boat, and the apostles saw him from the boat, and then Peter jumped out of the boat, and he walked to Christ upon the sea. So St. Peter says, well, he walked across the sea. Why doesn't he walk back? He walked from Capernaum to the other side, of Decapolis, why doesn't he walk back? And he, is, and he doesn't walk back, he gets into a boat. Why does he constrain himself to get it into a boat? And the reason is this. He could have said, follow me. I am the master, and you are all my slaves. You are all my servants. You are all my disciples, and all of you are the same. And each one has his own individual path to God. One of the great tragedies of the Protestant religion 
There's a belief that Jesus Christ is my personal Savior, and I personally connect to Him, and I personally follow Him, and that's all. But our Lord Jesus Christ, what did He say? He walked across the river. He walked across the sea. And he could have said, follow me in the sea. And he walked out in the sea. He says, oh, you want to follow me? Come on. You may have been to a swimming pool in the wintertime. Go to the swimming pool. You jump in the water. And does everybody jump in the water? And they tip their toes in the water. It's too cold. And they don't go up jump in the water. Well, if you have faith, jump in the water. We're afraid to jump in cold water. What about walking across the sea? Our Lord says, all right, I'm walking across the sea. You want to follow me? Start walking. Walk across the sea. Keep your eyes on me and walk across the sea. Now, when he had walked across the sea, St. Peter points out to us, he walked across the sea, and it was a storm. It wasn't just a calm sea. We can't walk across a calm sea. But he walked across a stormy sea, and then he saw St. Peter in a boat. and says, Peter, Peter saw Christ, and he jumped out of the boat. We don't have the faith of Peter. We don't have the strength of Peter. We don't have the love of Peter. We'll never compare to St. Peter. And Peter, with great confidence, jumped out of the boat. And he walked across the sea. Now remember, he's a fisherman. He's not afraid of water. Later on, 15 days after Lord Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, he got into the water and he swam from the shore. He's not afraid of the water. He can swim. But he got into the sea and he walked across the water to his master. And he walked and he walked and he walked. It was something like when I can't remember at our little road in Kentucky there, there's railroad tracks, and we said, we're going to walk down to the bridge. And we walked down to the bridge, and the bridge looks like it's, it's only a few feet away, the railroad bridge. We can walk across the river on the bridge. And we walked to the bridge, and 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 it doesn't get any closer. And you look back, and the road is very far away, and you keep walking to the bridge. And that's what happened to St. Peter. He got out of the boat, and he walked to Christ, and walked to Christ, but he was still far away. And look back, and the boat was far away. And what happened to St. Peter? He took an account of the wind and the waves. He took an account of the wind and the waves. And the great Peter, with all that faith that made him get so far into the sea, looking at our Lord Jesus Christ, he became afraid, and he sank beneath the waves. He was going to drown. Lord, save me. And the Lord came over and picked him up. And what did he do with Peter? He walked with Peter back inside of the boat. So why does our Lord come back in a boat? He does not come in the boat, back in the boat. He doesn't need the boat. He constrains himself to the boat. He doesn't need the boat. He can walk across the sea. Why does he get into the boat, says St. Peter Chrysostomus? He gets in the boat because of us. We're afraid to walk across the sea. We should have the faith of St. Peter. And he had great faith, but how long did it last? About five minutes. He walked across the sea with great faith, but then he took, he took account of the wind. He took account of the waves. And he sank. We're afraid to walk across the sea. Therefore, the Lord constructed a boat. He constructed a boat to carry us across the sea. Now, it is not just going across the sea. It's going across the very stormy sea, the stormiest of seas. Remember when he had the first boat constructed, he told Noah, construct a boat. And this boat, all flesh shall be saved. And whatever flesh is outside of that boat, it shall not be saved. Now there were many, many boats on the day of the flood. Thousands and thousands of boats. But this boat was designed by God. This boat was constructed by the command of God. And this boat had pitch on the inside and pitch on the out. And this boat had a roof on it. And this boat was sealed. And those outside the boat, they all drowned. Maybe there are some of some boats or some great uh, uh, sailors who made it all the way through the 40 days of rain. Maybe they did. But the water stayed in one year across uh, above the land. And maybe they ended up in the Pacific Ocean where it still stays above the land. And they died. Not one of them survived. For the boat was constructed by our Lord Jesus Christ. It was commanded by God. Now what about those inside the boats? Those who stayed inside the boat with Noah and those who stay inside the boat with the Lord Jesus Christ, they have no danger at all. They are very safe. Our Lord Jesus Christ constructed a boat and he got into a boat for us. He didn't go to a boat for him. One time he's in the boat and he decided he was tired and he slept. And the, the, the boat was tossed in the waves and they thought they were perishing. 
And when there is a sea, a great sea, tosses a boat in the waves, it perishes. That's the most normal thing in the world. When, there's weave, when, the, when there's, the waves of the sea are so powerful, the boat will eventually sink. There is no boat that can defeat the sea. But what happened when this boat was in the sea? There were such great waves that they were about to sink, and they woke him up and said, Lord, save us, we're perishing. And he got up. Did he bless the boat? Did he say, I'm going to make this boat to be able to survive the greatest of storms? No, he went up and he calmed the sea. The boat defeated the sea. This sea, no sea can sink this holy boat. Another time we see the boat of our Lord Jesus Christ, it was filled with great weight, loaded with so many fishes, and it was about to be sinking, but the boat did not sink. He built a boat for us, and we get into this boat, and the boat is there to protect us, and the boat is there to help us, and he put people in the boat. He put a pope in the boat. He said, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. He put apostles in the boat. He who hears you, hears me. And he put others in the boat. And there's a boat in which there are, there, there are sailors in the boat, and there are, there are captains in the boat, and there are many in the boat. And as they travel across the sea of this world, from time to time, they are taken out. Some fall out of the boat and into the sea and drown. Others are taken up like Elias into the kingdom of heaven. But the boat continues to sail. And he said, this boat that I have constructed, it shall continue until the ending of the world. It is the boat of our Holy Mother, the church, that our Lord Jesus Christ founded. And why did he found this boat? To make it easy for us to get across a very difficult sea. He made it easy for us. We get inside of this boat. We follow the rules of our Holy Mother, the church. We stay inside the boat. We go across the sea. And if we are outside the boat, we drown. Our Lord constructed a boat for us, not for, the, not, for, not for himself. How many people would walk across the sea? He said, you just follow me. Keep your eyes only on me and follow what's only in your heart. He said, no, he who hears you hears me. He gave us priests in the Old Testament. He gave us priests in the New Testament. He gave us his holy church. He gave us means to go across the sea. And some will fall out of the boat and drown. Others will stay in the boat. But he gave us the boat. And this boat is a most beautiful thing. And why was it given? To make it easy to be saved. Without it, we would get lost in so many directions. When Martin Luther decided as a Catholic priest that he didn't like his priesthood anymore, and when Martin Luther decided he didn't like the church anymore, he found it his own little way. And he said, I go myself. And there was only a few of the Protestants at that time. Now there are over 100,000 divisions of them. And they will continue to divide and divide. Because they're not traveling in a boat. There is a sacred boat built by our Lord Jesus Christ. And St. Peter's Arnold says he built this holy boat. He doesn't want us to be alone. And how did he construct human society? I speak a language given to me by my father. I live in a country which is, which is my fatherland. I live with a family. I am not meant to be alone. We are meant to be together. We are not meant to be alone. We need the help of others. And then how, how do I know what to do? I follow the example. We are not like the birds. We're not like the beavers. The mother beaver and the father beaver don't teach beavers. This is how you make a beaver nest. This is how you make a wall. This is how you make a dam. Pay attention, you little brat. This is how you build a dam. He doesn't teach them. The beaver knows from his own heart. He doesn't need to be taught by his father. He doesn't need to be taught by his mother. He just knows how to build a dam. And so, but it is not that way with us. Because we're meant to be a part of society. We're meant to learn from our others, from our ancestors. We're meant to learn from our fathers. That's why St. Paul said, I have handed down what I have received. How did you get to heaven? Do what I do. One of the things a sailor does is he swabs the deck. Because, you know, salt water causes a lot of trouble for the deck. How do you swab it? Well, you do what Daddy did. He's a deck swabber. And you do what he did. And others are captains. And others are different levels in the ship. And the ship goes and goes and goes as long as the sailors do what sailors do and the captains do what captains do. And the ship continues. And the ship is there to protect us. It's there for our good. It's there so that it's easy to travel across this world to the kingdom of heaven. In fact, it says in the book of Daniel that those that are damned shall rise to reproach to see it always. 
And the fathers tell us that the great, one of the greatest sorrows of the damned is they see how easy it was to be saved, how easy it is to go to heaven, and how many helps God gave us. He gave us examples. He gave us helps. He gave us those to guide us into the kingdom of heaven. And he told us what to do. And we know what the rules are. Remember what St. Paul said. Though we ourselves, St. Paul, or an angel from heaven, teach you something different than we've already taught you, let them be anathema. This is how I learned to swab a deck. This is how I learned to pray. This is how I learned to genuflect. This is how I learned to love. This is how I learned to fight. This is how I learned to believe. And if they teach you something different, let them be anathema. The devil has tried to sink this ship so many times with wind and with waves. The wind that brings up the waves of passions that drag us down. And the wind of false doctrine that blows across this, the, the, the world and tries to sink this ship. But the ship will never sink. And God also built in a small way little ships. We are to imitate this ship. And there must be little ships. One little ship is called the family. It's the most beautiful little boat that God constructed and today they say in the family, well, everyone's equal in the family. The children don't need to obey the mommy and daddy. And the mommy doesn't need to obey the daddy. The daddy doesn't need to direct the family. They're all equal. <coughs> mommy can nurse the baby as on Monday, and daddy can nurse the babies on Tuesday. And what do they do? They are all going to do the same things. They're going to have a 12-hour shift and a 12-hour shift. But God made a boat. And in the boat, there's a captain. In the boat, there's to help. There's deck mates. In the boat, there's a the lowly sailors, and they all work together. When a young man is ordained a priest, he kneels in front of the bishop, and the bishop reads prayers, and he says, "These are the duties of the priest." And he turns to the rector of the seminary or the representative of the rector. Do you find this man worthy? Is he worthy to be a priest? And he says, "As far as human frailty allows, as far as human frailty can know, this man seems to be worthy." The bishop says, oh, that's nice. Not good enough. He then turns to all the people in the crowd, all the people inside of the church, everyone present, and he reminds them, just as in a ship, the captain and the sailors share the same fate. If he's a good captain and they make it across the sea, all make it across the sea. If he's a bad captain and they sink, all sink. So just as the captain and the sailors are together in the ship, it is not enough that this man says he's a good captain to be. I say to the faithful, do you find anything in this young man that says he, you don't want him to be your captain? This guy is really good at putting holes in the floor. He is good at drilling holes in the deck, but he's not good at swabbing the deck. Is this the man you want for your captain? No. And so he asked the people, say whatever the trouble is. Or forever hold your peace. And so we are in a ship. We are in a ship. We are in a holy boat. We are traveling from one place to another. And they tell us there are two banks. Some people are in a false ship. They're trying to get away from the real ship. And they're drowning. And the ship is sinking. And the custom in the old days is a ship that would pull by, a ship that was not sinking would pull by a ship that's sinking. And they would put a plank from one ship to the other. And those that walked across the plank. They would be under the ship and they would be saved. And those who did not walk across the plank, they would drown. And there are two planks. The first plank is called baptism, and the second plank is called confession. Whose sins shall not forgive, they are forgiven them. Whose sins shall retain, they are retained. The men are going baptized every nation, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And he gave us seven sacraments, seven easy ways to get to heaven. He gave us prayer, he gave us customs, he gave us a structure. And he said, Remember that this church is holy. And in this church there be very many unholy men, but the church will survive them. Follow the rules of the church. Let sailors be sailors. Let captains be captains. Let all the deckhands in between do their duties. And if they fall away from their duties, don't follow the bad example of those that do, for they shall be wiped off the boat. And so this is a great boat. Our Lord Jesus Christ had to constrain himself to be inside of this boat. And this boat will always be the safest means to get across the sea. And those outside the boat, they shall not. Let us stay inside the holy boat that God has given us. Let us enter into the boat. And also, what is the duty of, the, of, of those inside the boat? What kind of boat do we have? It's a fishing boat. It's a boat that's going across the sea in which all the fish are drowning. 
And what do we do? We let down nets into the sea in order to pull out the drowning fish. And every fish that wants to come out of the sea of sin. And every fish that wants to come out of the sea of darkness where they cannot see the sky above them. And they can't see the land. Every fish that wants to be pulled out of the sea of darkness. The nets will catch them and bring them out of the sea. And they shall all be brought upon the deck and they shall be saved. And so that they, their God made this beautiful boat to cross the sea. Noah's boat he constructed by the command of Noah, a hundred years to construct. He constructed his boat in three and a half years. He built his apostles. He built his 72 disciples. He built his deacons. He built his holy women. He built, he built, he built his, his, his faithful. And he told them how to live. And then he said, this is the most important thing, how to die. But those that die, lovers of Christ, those that die on the cross, those that die as our Lord Jesus Christ died, these shall go to great happiness, not to flee that holy cross, for it's the gateway and the port into the kingdom of heaven. And also we have, we get a hope for the beginnings of a new family today. There's a promise of a beginning of a new family. And what is a family? What is the purpose of a family? Very simple. To make children that are going to know, love, and serve God. To make children that are going to be part of the mystical body of Christ, to make children that are going to go to heaven, that are going to be a benefit to all of society. The purpose of marriage is children, and we rejoice in the reality of marriage because a new little boat is constructed. We're not meant to go through this world alone. So many people today, there are billions of people today, they are living alone. But what does it mean to be alone? It is the greatest punishment in hell. It says multiple times in sacred scripture that those that are cast into hell, they shall be forgotten and they shall be alone. There is no society in hell. They are isolated and alone. In heaven, there is a society and all communicate one with another. And each has a place inside of the society and is the most beautiful community. And, and then what is a family supposed to be? The beginning of heaven. There is a father who must be like God the Father. There is a mother who must be like our Holy Mother the Church. What does the mother church do? She tries to make it as easy as a ride across the sea. Sometimes in many modern families, their family is tossed about by the seas and their struggles. They say, I, I can't take the struggles in the sea. When you find in the ocean and there's a great storm and your ship is being tossed, how many people say, I can't take the ship that's being tossed. I'm going to drop into the ocean. I'm going to jump into the waves. For those who jump into the waves in the ocean and leave the ship, they will drown. And so it is in the family. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So if they hate each other, fine. Like the famous case, in the, in the one famous case in the African missionaries, Greece and Africa, went to a particular tribe. And in that tribe, there was an extremely proud, obnoxious, vile human being who was a guy. And then there was an extremely obnoxious, vile, pride human being, which is a girl. And everybody hated both of them. And they fell madly in love. And they said, we're going to get married. And the parents of both said, you're horrible. Everybody hates you. You're horrible. Don't get married. You're going to hate each other. We know better than you. We want to get married. And so they got married. The priest couldn't stop it. The family couldn't stop it. They got married. After a year of marriage, they came to the missionary. said, Father, you were right. We hate each other. He's miserable. She's miserable. We can't say, we want you to end the marriage. He said, Okay. Do you really want me to end the marriage? Sure, I want you to end the marriage. All right, I'll end it. So he went to the back room and he grabbed a stick. It came out, whack, hit the husband. Came out, whack, hit the wife. After the second time, what are you doing? This hurts. I'm ending the marriage. One of you has to die. <laughs> and so, and they said, well, is there any other way? Uh, no, that's the, that's the only way. Let me continue. <laughs> whack, whack. They said, is there nothing else to do? No, no, that's that's it. But we'll stay married. Okay, if you have any problems, you come back and see me in time. <laughs> <laughs> and so they went away. And so did their problems go away. And they found a way to live with each other. And they found a way to love each other. And they fixed their problems. Because what God has joined in together, no man can put asunder. Do you really care if your great-great-great-grandpa was a, wicked, was a horrible, vile scumbag, and your great-great-grandmother was a wicked witch of the West? Do you really care? All that matters is they had your great-great-great-grandpa. All that matters is that they stay together. All that matters is that they raise your child. A family is a ship. We don't always get along on the ship. But if you get off the ship, you drown. So what do you do if you're stuck on a ship? You're going to be on that ship for the rest of your life. 
Learn to get along with losers. <laughs> the fact is, we have to learn to adapt to those that are on the ship. And, we, and, these, and those on the ship are to help us get to the kingdom of heaven. And there's no easier way. I'm tired of being rocked back and forth in the ship. I want to get out. i got to get out. And you jump into the sea and drown in seconds. Don't jump into the frozen sea. Stay in the ship. God made us to live in a boat. It's the safest way to go across the sea. How many of those animals were harmed upon that sea, upon that great flood? What did Noah do eight days before the flood? He prayed. That's what he did. And the doors were shut. And finally the rains came. And he remained most calm. And what did he do? The whole store, store the whole sea outside, the whole world was drowning. What did he do? He fed the sheep. He fed the lambs. He fed the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> he fed all of the various animals on the boat. He had dinner with his family. He prayed. He took care of all upon the boat. That's what he did. And because he did that in a great storm, all of flesh was saved. We are in a terrible time in the history of our church. Catholics are leaving the faith. One billion Catholics, the majority of them, do not believe what Jesus Christ taught. The majority of them do not follow the gospel. They hate it. And it is a time of a great storm. We are experiencing the great apostasy. I've already spoken about Matthew chapter 24. That the whole world will go away from me. The whole world will run away. And they are going to put you to death thinking they do a, a service to God. They will hate the truth. They will see good and they will say bad. They will see white and they will say black. And there shall be ugliness all around us. It's going to be a terrible, terrible thing. Now what did he say to the first father? The greatest of all fathers. The great St. Peter. He is the father. The first really holy father. Now, he denied Christ three times. And what happened? Our Lord came to him and said, Peter, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Yea, Lord, know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. What do you do in a storm? Feed the lambs. Feed the sheep. Take care of those upon the boat. Go out and do that which is good. Take a net and throw it in the sea. And try to catch some fish and bring them into the boat. This is what we do in a storm. And then we'll make it across the sea. Therefore, don't be too afraid that in our times there are more storms than there ever have been. So many terrible storms. Is the mental guy who has Alzheimer's and is straight from hell, Biden, going to become the next president? <laughs> Trying to emulate Hillary? <laughs> or is Trump going to become president who is not standing for Christ? What are we going to do? God will make sure that in the end, his victory will come. We are going to stand for him, and we're going to feed the lambs, and feed the lambs, and feed the sheep. We are not for a false freedom, but which any man can do whatever he wants. That's what creates hell. Every man wants to kill their neighbor. Every man wants everything for himself. We want to go to heaven. We want all the world to know, love, and serve God. Remember Lord Jesus Christ said when he was on the cross and on Palm Sunday, Today is the day for me to be praised. And they refused to praise him. They said, why, how dare you let these children praise you? And they said, if these children did not praise me, the very rocks would cry out. And on Good Friday, the children didn't praise. The rocks did cry out. And they praised him at 3 p.m. And a thief praised him just before that. And he was praised. And so we must also praise Christ and be inside the holy boat and feed the lambs, and feed the lambs, and feed the sheep, and don't be disturbed that our little boat is being rocked back and forth. It's the safest way to get across the sea, and there is no other way. Let's stay in our holy church, stay in our holy boat. Our Lord Jesus Christ is there. He sleeps, and the storm grows. One day we'll wake him up and say, Lord, save us, we're perishing. And he'll get up and complain and say, Oh, ye little faith, why are you waking me up? But I'll stop the storm. I'm sorry for my little faith, but can you please stop the storm? And he stops the storm because of his infinite goodness of our God. Remember what it says in the Holy Psalm we read on, Good Fr on Friday. The people of God, the Jews, they did evil. They did evil 
and they did evil. And they repented, and they repented, and they repented. But finally it says, and they did evil, and the gods sent them chastisement from the enemies. And then they did not repent, and they were not sorry, but they faked their sorrow, and they feigned sorrow. And he took their feigned sorrow as if it was real sorrow, and he saved them anyway. We should have a perfect sorrow for our sins because we love God. And if it's not a perfect sorrow, it's a kind of feigned sorrow. But even if our sorrow is not perfect, let us have it anyway. Even if our faith is not perfect, let's have it anyway. Like the wise man said, our Lord said to the man, you, are, you, you, you don't believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. We're going to make it through this great crisis in our holy church. And the crises of the families and the crises of the dioceses and the crises of the religious orders and the crises of the countries and the crises of everywhere in the world. All these crises we shall make it through. Just stay in the boat, swab the deck, <laughs> feed the lambs, feed the sheep, clean the poop out of the, out of the stalls once in a while. <laughs> and God will take care of us. We will travel across the sea and find ourselves safely at the other port. Stay in the holy boat that God constructed for us. And let's love this boat, our holy mother the church, and stay close to her all the way till we arrive at the port of heaven. Building up as you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.